flames may rage. Give me the strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it is too late, or save an elder person from the horror of the fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me, to guard my every neighbor and protect their property. And if I'm according to your will, I have to lose my life. Please bless with your protecting hand my children and my wife. Well, as you know, we've got a new fire chief, uh, and I'm excited about Chief Montgomery and what he's already done in the few short days he's been on board. Um, we're looking to really develop, develop depth uh, among our leadership uh, within the fire department. Uh, the rank and file firefighter on up through the officer ranks, uh, we want them to f uh, have a cohesive view of what their role is in our city. Because uh, it's more than just fire suppression, it's got to be prevention, it's got to be community uh, involvement. Uh, and I think Chief Montgomery has a heart toward being involved in the community. Uh, so that's what I hope to establish this first year uh, and give Chief Montgomery time to sort of assess where our fire department is in this growing city. We're growing at a pretty significant clip. Uh, so he's got to sort of do it on the fly. As the fire chief, uh, some of my responsibilities are uh, you know, mainly the budget and making sure that the personnel have what they need, health and welfare of uh, the people, uh, making sure that we have the equipment that we need and that it's, uh, th that it works properly, um, and also planning, uh, helping with planning and growth of the city uh, to make sure that we have the resources to cover that. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite broad, uh, you know, health and safety, the safety and, and the structures, uh, buildings that are being uh, uh, built around the city. Uh, but for the, for the most part, the, the safety of the people, uh, fire safety in particular. The Honorable Chief Freddie Douglas Montgomery Jr. What is the key to developing a good team? I think you have to have a collection of individuals who bring individual strengths to, uh, to the group, uh, but also who share a common vision or mission. Um, they're willing to set aside uh, their own thoughts in terms of to achieve the goal, common goal of the team, uh, but they bring a diversity of strengths and diversity of thought and ideas and expertise. Um, so really it starts with a common vision uh, and then you got to have a leader of the team who cast the vision and then get those teammates to uh, follow. Uh, you know, firefighting is very specific. Uh, fire and rescue uh, is, is very specific in what we do. Um, we're starting to get a lot of technology involved in what we do. We're also starting to plan ahead from what we see in other areas. So I think some of the major changes you'll see is uh, us being involved uh, in development of some things uh, that, that will affect the safety of our, our people, our citizens. I have a big role 
Um, I take care of all the firefighters, the men and the women. I order their uniforms, I do bids, I pay all the bills, I prepare the budget, I take care of leave time. Um, I'm there for their support and I work mainly for the fire chief and the deputy chief. There were no women here, and I just wanted to prove that I could be a firefighter. I just had to do more, like I had to give 110% because I was a female. In my years of experience, it hasn't been very common to see female firefighters uh, fill these roles. It's been uh, mostly male firefighters. To see females in a male-dominated role, well, it makes me feel very thankful and appreciative that the women are being able to do things that they've wanted to do and it does take a lot to do something in a male-dominated role. So I'm very happy that they're given the opportunity to do that. Some attributes of a good firefighter, in my opinion, would be um, someone who is confident, someone who is dedicated, has integrity, is, um, has strength for sure, um, is intelligent, good at problem solving. We're the only people that are allowed to go in um, a structure without police escort or anything like that, so we need to make sure that we have that integrity and honesty and availability to be able to do that for our patients and the people that we um, go into their houses, whether it be a fire or a first responder call, and come out with nothing but the patient and anything that they need. I guess I ever had an inspiration to be a firefighter, but whenever we were little, uh, my mom and my sisters and I, we would always be siren chasers. So anytime we saw an ambulance or fire truck go by, my mom would be like, you guys want to go see what's going on? We're like, yeah. <laughs> so um, it was just always exciting. Uh, I've always been a people person. I love to be, I know it's weird to say, but I love to be there for people whenever they're in need uh, and not just whenever they're in a good place, but also in a bad place. This was never a dream job of mine. Um, I actually worked for FedEx being a driver. Um, 
I was approached by um, another firefighter here, told me, okay, well, I think you're really good. You know, I think you should come try out, blase, blase, blase. So that's how I got on. It's never been, you know, I was five and was like, oh, I want to be a firefighter grow up. No, it wasn't that, so. I don't have a big grand story for it. I met a firefighter and uh, I started asking him questions and it just started to click. And I, I, I really wish I had some big story to tell, but I don't. And I'm somebody who will dive in. I don't tiptoe into the water. And at that point in my life, I was starting my freshman year of college and I was undeclared. And the first week of school, I switched it to fire science. And I just rolled with it and um, fell in love overnight. I just knew that that's what I was meant to do. And the deeper I got into it, the deeper I got into my degree, and then I got hired on with my first fire department. I mean, there's there was no doubt in my mind at that point. It's just, it's what I was put on this earth to do. is important but it's also more than just gender it's uh, it's race it's culture it's thought perspective people from different backgrounds different parts of the world uh, converge on Clarksville uh, for a number of different reasons and so we that's how you get um, that's how you get more focus and really self-improvement by having people of different experiences come together and be a part of one of those departments you know, in order to increase the number of female firefighters, I think as a fire department, we have to be intentional. Uh, we have to use uh, programs like this. Uh, we have to use our females that we have as ambassadors uh, and make sure that they're visible, they're out in the community, and make sure that people know that they can do this job. Uh, their uh, female firefighters are just as good as male firefighters, you know, and in most ways they're, they're more compassionate uh, you need that female firefighter on the crew uh, to kind of bring down uh, the, the macho level of, of the guys. It's really a good mix to have a female firefighter. So I think the more we get that word out to the community, uh, the more uh, we don't hinder these ladies from, from joining our ranks, the better off we are. So I think, uh, you know, just as a department being intentional um, and letting it be known that uh, women are welcome here, Will, will help greatly. They're going to be the same whether you're male or female, but life safety, I mean, we want to reduce any risk to anyone's life. Um, you know, incident stabilization, you want to stabilize whatever call you're on um, and then save people's property. That's going to be on a scene, but if, you know, within the fire department, you also have responsibilities that aren't just for one gender. You've got to take care of the stations, you've got to take care of your brothers and sisters, you've got to train and you have to study. Um, those are responsibilities that people don't think about. It's not just on the calls we go, it's also inside the house. But they're going to be the same responsibilities for male or female. We both clean the bathrooms, we both clean up the kitchen, we all do it together. So, uh, Coming from Alaska to the south, um, there are some things that I had to get used to just culturally um, being around southern gentlemen here and being in Alaska where it's, I don't even know how to describe that, <laughs> it's different, it's very different. So coming here, doors were held open for me and I was called ma'am and I, it was like, no, just don't hold the door open for me, um, don't call me ma'am, just call me Abby, it's, it's all out of respect, but it was very different for me. Um, 
to experience little things like that um, just because I felt like they were trying to treat me differently, but it wasn't at that at all. It's just, it's just the South. It's out of respect. So now I'm used to it, but not ever discriminated against or treated differently in a vast way that's disrespectful. I look out for each other. You know, like I said, this is family oriented. When I come in here, I expect for my fellow sisters and brothers to look out for me on every call and I will do the same for them. This job is not meant for everybody, and to come here every third day, it may sound like, oh, you work 24 hours on, 48 off. No, you need to have passion for it because those 48 hours come up fast, and when you're excited to come to work and excited to do your job, it's, it, it's incredible. And I think if you don't have passion for this job, you're not going to last long at all. You. Okay, being here, being a female firefighter, and the main department is men, you have to get used to a lot of different um, people, um, their attitudes, their way of thinking. Um, at times it's, it's hard. But um, like I said, you just have to really just get used to everyone and of how they operate because we have so many different people here, um, different backgrounds. So it's just really getting to know everyone. Everything, everything about this department is awesome. Um, I don't have a whole lot of family in this area. My family's more than an hour away, and I know that's not very far uh, in some aspects, but every three days for 24 whole hours I spend with all these guys and, and women. Um, of course, I'm the only woman on my shift right now, but just even seeing them come in and out of shift whenever we're coming on and they're going off or, or vice versa, it's, it's, like, um, it's like a sleepover with your best friends all the time you know we eat together we watch tv together we go on calls together i mean they're always there they've always got my back we've always got each other's back um it's just a, it's a family getting it sturdy in there. Did you go ahead and crank them at the same time to get them a little more in there I first? Did, yeah, just get them just oh, a little. Yeah. 
Yeah, type one construction, good job. Number two, what construction type is composed of materials will not contribute to fire development or spread? Yeah, good job. A thousand degrees. Six, which of the following best describes a primary dangerous building condition? because I had questions. I didn't, I was in a new place and I didn't exactly know how things went and I approached Ashley from the very beginning and asked her questions like, hey, I'm, I might be having this problem, I, I, I need your advice. And to meet somebody who's so open and honest and was immediately there for me, and I can say that about any female here, I've had really great conversations with them, and there's just an immediate respect that you have for each other. Uh, coming into a male-dominated industry, you have to be tough, uh, not because you're treated in any certain way, it's just different. It's just different, you're now one of the guys, and me, I didn't grow up with brothers, so being around 235 men all the time, it's, it's different vibes. Um, than if you were around 200 and however many females. So it's it's a very different lifestyle, but it it takes a tough woman, and I respect every single one of them to the core and appreciate having them in my life. Family oriented, definitely, because we all love family here.
what I'd love to say to female firefighters is thank you for your service, just like I would say to anyone. Uh, but I'd also like to say, reach out and help us engage the community, uh, especially those that look like you. Um, short, tall, uh, brown, white, it doesn't matter to me, uh, but reach out and help us expand our view. Give us ideas on how we would recruit more female firefighters, female, female first responders, female police officers, female building codes inspectors. I mean, there's just a, there's just a strength in our diversity. Uh, and while we say we celebrate diversity, and we do, um, we don't do enough to really provide uh, more depth of diversity within our city workforce and really in our city overall. So I think we can always do a better job and we're committed to doing that. We're awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's not every day. I mean, female firefighters are few and far between. I know some departments have more than we have, um, but here, I encourage more women to do it. I mean, it's, it's hard work, but it's good work. Um, it fills in all the voids that you might have in your life. It's just, it's awesome. I mean, you have to be strong. You have to have courage. You have to be dedicated. Everything that a man or woman, you know, it's not specific to either gender. It's just, that's what you have to do. And, um, but I mean, I've been, I've had people tell me, you're a mom. Why would you want to go to a, work at a fire department and leave your kids overnight. But uh, there's so many things people will tell you why you shouldn't become a firefighter, but don't listen to them. Because I get so much more time with my kids. I, I get so, I have a bigger family than I've ever had. If you have your mind set on something, don't give up because it's, I mean, like I said, I get to spend so much more time with my kids. I get to like learn more about myself and I can't count how many people try to talk me out of it, but it, I, I don't know, maybe those people just didn't get to have or accomplish their dreams. I don't know, but if you have your mindset on it, don't give up. It's worth it. I just, I just enjoy spending the 24 hours with them. Honestly, they're, they have become my family in a very short amount of time, and I know their families, I know their kids, I know their wives, I know what's going on in their lives and they know what's going on in mine. And there's been days that I've had so much going on and I feel like almost I'm about to explode. And with them, I can just tell them, hey, I have this going on in my life. And they're like the big brothers I never had. And they're like, okay, let's figure out, let's figure out a solution. And I really rely on them to just be the support in my life. Um, that I don't have from outside of work because I'm not from here. And so I don't have any family here except for my Station 2 crew and A-Shift and really this entire department. But those guys are incredible. Um, they make me look forward to work. I mean, obviously helping people is a given, but you're spending 24 hours with these people, so it's a lot more fun when you enjoy who you're with. And I wouldn't trade them for anything. Stay strong. Stay strong and show them what you're made of because we're just the same. We're strong just as any other man. This is not just a man's world. So stay strong.